This documentary will discuss the five freedoms, current legislation for zoos, and my findings on the behaviour and welfare conditions of the Lard Gibbons in Camperdown Park, Malakou and Cheney. Here is a little introduction clip of them both. The five freedoms were derived in 1965 as a result of the Bramble Report. They were originally designed for livestock. It was felt that livestock should be able to lie down, stand up, move around freely, groom themselves and stretch their limbs. They are freedom from hunger and thirst, freedom from discomfort, freedom from pain, injury and disease, freedom to express natural behaviour, and freedom from fear and distress. Current legislation for zoos are the Dangerous Wild Animals Act 1974, Bayaza and Iaza, DEFRA, and the Zoo Animal Licensing Act 1981. The Zoo Animal Licensing Act 1981. This involves an inspection of standards from a veterinary surgeon and a local authority in the first year. The zoo must then be re-inspected six months prior to the licence renewal. The licence will be granted from the local authority on a four-year period and then on reapplication may be extended to six years. Bayaza and Iaza, they provide their own guidance on keeping animals. These standards must be met to become a Bayaza or Iaza zoo member. DEFRA, Department for Environmental Food and Rural Affairs. They provide guidance on keeping zoo animals based around the five freedoms to ensure good welfare of the animals being kept in a zoo. The Dangerous Wild Animals Act. This provides that no person may keep any dangerous wild animal except under the authority of the licence granted by a local authority. The keepers are working hands-on with the animals. Their priority is to maintain and or improve the welfare of the animals that they care for by promoting the five freedoms and encouraging the animals' natural behaviours as much as possible. This includes taking records. They may decide to keep other records, such as feeding records, to monitor how much an animal is eating and what they are eating if they are on a varied diet. They are also responsible for educating members of the public. ZIMS is a database used to store all information regarding the animals, from permits to enclosures, feeding records, enrichment, in a manner that allows members to decide who could see what. It is considered to be the world standard animal care and management software. This system helps them to achieve best practice animal management and conservation goals. A large Gibbons captive diet can consist of a combination of fruit, veg, eggs, chicken, cereals and grains, leaf eater primate pellets, mealworms and cheese. At Comfort Down, the, the large Gibbons are fed three times daily. In the morning, they're fed two peppers, two apples, one carrot, two kiwi or plums and two handfuls of green. Lunch, two peppers, two handfuls of greens and seasonal fruit. In the afternoon, two pears, one carrot, three handfuls of veg. They can also have one cooked sweet potato when available and have two handfuls of cooked rice three times weekly. The lard gibbons are also offered a pellet diet and a bowl in their enclosure. Here is some footage of the keeper Hannah preparing some feed for the lard gibbons. In the wild, a lard gibbons diet is mostly fruit, some leaves, flowers and new shoots, insects and occasionally bird eggs and small birds. They are fussy eaters and will prefer to eat fruit over anything else. The feed must provide diversity in taste, colour, size and nutritional value. In captivity, they are fed in a manner to try and encourage natural behaviours. This must reflect a natural diet and enhance a natural manner of feeding, which could be achieved by feeding up high and providing food that imitates the natural feeding behaviours. Feeding methods to mimic natural feeding behaviours Care must be taken with some methods. The feed must be kept 1.5 metres off the ground to reduce the risk of faecal contamination of the food and to help exhibit natural feeding behaviours. 
It must be presented in a way to prolong feeding and foraging. This could be done by adding in some food puzzles as a type of enrichment. If scatter feeding has taken place, it's important to ensure that they will eat the food scattered to prevent a rodent infestation, so little and often may be a key note to look at when scatter feeding. Here is some footage of a keeper hiding food in the Largibbons enclosure to prolong feeding and foraging behaviours. Indications of good welfare standards include following the five freedoms, no signs of any uncharacteristic behaviours, appropriate exercise space, must be safe and secure for the animal with a safety plan in place, must be supplied with a suitable diet, water and bedding, suitable steps in place to ensure the prevention of disease, appropriate veterinary care when required, and providing the animal with shelter from members of the public. Indication of poor welfare standards include soil bedding, uncharacteristic behaviours due to living conditions, unsuitable diets with little or no nutritional value, no mental stimulation or cramped living conditions, no shelter from members of the public, not meeting the five freedoms, lack of exercise space, unsafe and not secure environment for the animals. Each week, we completed a welfare sheet for the Largibbons at Camperdown. This was to assess their living welfare conditions. As shown in the welfare chart, Camperdown provide good welfare standards for their Largibbons. They provide adequate food and water, different types of enrichment and have good safety measures in for both the animals and the visitors. We did speak to management and the keepers regarding some frayed ropes. We were informed that this would be dealt with. Uncharacteristic behaviours in captive wild animals are repetitive behaviours which appear to have no obvious goal or function. These include behaviours such as pacing, swaying, head bobbing, circling, bar biting, over grooming and redirected aggression. Causes of uncharacteristic behaviours may include boredom, lack of stimulation, an unsuitable enclosure, their enclosure may be next to a predator, set feeding times, or they may have been hand reared. The effects of hand rearing on animals may include being socially and sexually incompetent, no learnt parenting skills from their mother, and they may exhibit uncharacteristic behaviours. This can be reduced or prevented by trying to reintroduce to others. Carnivores can develop uncharacteristic behaviours such as pacing at feeding times. This could be due to a set feeding time in the zoo, such as a wolf species anticipating food being put into the enclosure. Herbivores can develop uncharacteristic behaviours such as over grooming. This could be due to stress or ill health due to boredom and a too small environment in the zoo. Gibbons are ornivores. They can display uncharacteristic behaviours such as redirected aggression and self-harming. This could be due to boredom and stress. Rocking may also be shown in cramped enclosures. Methods to prevent uncharacteristic behaviours in gibbons. This may include environmental enrichment to encourage natural behaviours such as feeding toys, ensuring that they have to work for their food, also, ropes to swing on like they would in the wild on trees. Also ensuring that they're in a suitable location in the zoo, so that not too close to any predators they would have in the wild, as this may increase their stress levels. Staggered feeding time to reduce the risk of pacing and other behaviours that arise when there are set feeding times. We used ethograms to study the Largibbons' behaviours. We studied behaviours such as playing alone, playing together, grooming themselves, grooming each other, eating, sleeping, foraging, vocalisation, resting, chasing, interacting with enrichment, interacting with humans, being out of sight, running, swinging, rolling along the floor and sexual interactions. After studying the Largibbon's behaviour over a long period of time, it was decided that they could do with more food types of enrichment to encourage more natural feeding behaviours. Our ethogram showed that the Largibbon's spent an awful lot of time resting, especially Shaney. 
After we had decided our enrichment idea, we wrote it on paper and had a meeting with the joinery students at Dundee and Angus College. The following week, we met up with them to start making our enrichment project. However, our first idea didn't go to plan. The plastic was making too rough edges to put in with the lard gibbons enclosure. We then decided to make it with wood with plastic tubing around the outside for safety purposes. We then spent three weeks following and creating our enrichment with the joinery students. Here is footage of us making our enrichment project after we changed the materials. We first got a log of wood and put three big holes in it, then covered it with plastic tubing with lots of little small holes in it, meaning the lard gibbons have to spin the tubing to get their food out of the log. After our enrichment project was finished, we then took it down to Camperdown and with the help of the keepers got it in the lard gibbons enclosure. My data analysis hypothesis is that there will be a decrease in the amount of time the lard gibbons spent resting after the enrichment has been introduced and an increase in the amount of time spent interacting with their enrichment. Overall, they will become more active. We then spent time monitoring and recording changes in the lard gibbons behaviour after the environmental enrichment was introduced. There was definitely changes in both behaviours. In comparison to the before ethograms, Malaku had 19 average of occurrences playing with the enrichment, whereas before he had none. However, his rest in occurrences happened 11 times after the enrichment was introduced, whereas before he only had 10 occurrences of resting. Shani had 24.5 average of occurrences with playing with the enrichment, whereas before she had none. And her rest in occurrences had dropped by half from an average of 25 to an average of 12.5. In conclusion, once the enrichment was introduced to the lard gibbons enclosure, the female spent less time resting and more time interacting with the enrichment and was overall more active. Whereas, although the male spent more time resting, he was very interested in the enrichment. <laughs>